London Immigration Centre. Up to 50 people are spending their final hours in the UK. Jam from family, the jam from family, yeah. Jam from, come and hang with me. Hello, 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 Wagwan. Pick up yourself. What are you there, yard? Are you there, abroad? Welcome back to another episode of Life with the Jam Fans. So on today's episode, I want to come on and have a conversation about the picture some Jamaicans paint of Jamaica. Whilst most Jamaicans hold the flag high and are patriotic to their country and its advancement, there are always those who will seek or take any opportunity to try and see if they can paint the worst picture of Jamaica and speak the most ill and in the worst way about the country. And they're forgetting in so doing that they're not speaking ill of the country per se, but of the people who live on the island. And they're talking about those people when they're describing these scenarios. They're talking about the morals, the values, the mindsets, the principles and way of life of those people. I am a Jamaican. I have Jamaican one. We're going to look at the top four things that Jamaicans complain about and also suggest some possible solutions that could be explored to be able to see how we can bridge the gap and resolve these problems um, in the advancement of Jamaica. Crime statistics. No matter where in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. No papers I have to show. Meanwhile, when people are complaining about these things, these are some of the things that are actually happening in the background. And the law is out and about on patrol doing their job. And we thank them for the job that they do. Their service to us as a people. Second the charm. <laughs> Less than 10 miles apart. What them work? Not chicken them a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but this sun had it's some. Sure. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. All the best. Here are some solutions that are worth contemplating. How could we as a people take up our responsibility as citizens of this lovely country and seek out ways of implementing any of these. So we've got to think about some of the things that can be done to improve that and are these things that people are willing to take on board to go and have a go at and try to see how they can be an, an influence for change in their own community because some of the things that could help with this and that have been used in lots of different areas are things like skills hubs and I know we have Heart NTA and other schools like that that are providing training for people so that they can go out and have employment. We also need employment. Um, I do, I'm aware that employment is at one of its lowest at the moment at 4.2% for unemployment. Um, however, more employment and the availability of that is always a good thing. Um, community centers, building more of that so that young people have places they can go and be that's going to be contributing positively to them without the excess cost to parents, for example. Restorative services where people can learn different strategies for how to deal with certain problems that they have and how to manage disagreements and anger and I, I'm aware that there are work being done by government organizations going into schools and trying to support some of these and some places where they come out of school and go and do them. However, there's, that it can never be too much. Also, if there was access to social mobility programs, um, more access to that. Things like business grants and loans for people who are doing small businesses, more access to that, more access to planning out business and having business mentors to help, help them along and guide and direct them as they are trying to set up these businesses. Part of our, our thing that we need to re-establish as a people is learning how to treat each other well, how to respect what people have worked hard to achieve and um, be happy for them having it and understanding that they've gone through the process and they deserve to have what they've worked hard for and also looking out for the greater good of the country as a whole and not just self-serving and these are some of the things that if we start to do them again and revitalize those aspects of our country as a whole then we would be able to transform 
the landscape in terms of the crime statistics. It's corruption in the group of people that are representing the population. No matter where in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. No Meanwhile, when people are complaining about these things, these are some of the things that are actually happening in the background. www.auditorgeneral.gov.jm and check out the findings yourself. Then, keep track of how government has fixed the issue or not at www.jampja.org or countermeter. And if you're not happy with what you see, it's your job to contact your employees. It's easy when you visit the MP tracker on jampja.org. This is how we can do our part to make Jamaica land we own, Jamaica land we love, and Jamaica land we run well. A message from the Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal, funded by the European Union and UK Aid. Caller, you are now on air. Okay, so I recently graduated from high school and I'm nervous about what's next. Some motivation would help. All right, caller, we have just what you need. What you are getting today is a passport to the world. And you are going to decide how high your plane will fly. Because even though you have a passport, it doesn't mean that there won't be turbulence in the sky and some scary moments where you have to hold on to your seat and have faith that you will make it. I want you to remember the five important P's that help me to be successful. Positivity, perseverance, professionalism, progressiveness, and having a prosperous spirit. I can guarantee you that if you follow that template in life, you will be successful. The following is brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. Your government is empowering you through education, training, and development. That is why we have removed all fees for every Jamaican accessing training through the Heart NSTA Trust. So, whatever you desire training in, food and hospitality, beauty and cosmetology, housekeeping and hotel management, welding, carpentry, masonry, or any of the dozens of programs Heart offers, you can enroll completely free and change your life. We are building Jamaica. The proceeding was brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. I'm out of school now. I'm here to look at job. I'm going to just go up on an interview and then tell me say, I don't have enough experience. But I'm going to get experience if I don't get no job. No worry yourself, bro. I have some info for you. There is a $2 billion program that will help high school graduates gain job experience. 2,500 fifth and sixth form graduates will benefit from the LIFT program over five years. This program is also about investment. And so our young people will be getting $85,000 monthly. That is a part of poverty alleviation. This $70,000 in hand and $15,000 will be placed in their bank accounts that they will not be able to access until they complete the program. Here are some solutions that are worth contemplating. How could we as a people take up our responsibility as citizens of this lovely country and seek out ways of implementing any of these. The government is the people and the people elect a group of people to represent them. So what can be done to ensure that there is less corruption in the group of people that are representing the population and more transparency and accountability? Could it be that we need to see more display of um, public office accounts? or also be conscious of the relationships between um, organizations and corporations that the government goes into contract with? What are some of the things that would help us to feel that corruption levels are decreasing in the country? Do we need to set up groups that are going to make these demands of the government and government organization on behalf of the Jamaican people? Are there going to be things like NGOs that are going to be set up to hold establishments to account and bring support in areas where support are needed? How do we begin to change public opinion about our country? How do we also ensure that reporting is unbiased and factual or accurate? The infrastructures that are being built I have to show, cause I am a Jamaican, 
I have Jamaican walk, then me a Jamaican talk. Cause I am a Jamaican. Meanwhile, when people are complaining about these things, these are some of the things that are actually happening in the background. Jamaica has been investing heavily in a number of mega projects that are designed to transform the island's economy and infrastructure. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the top mega projects in Jamaica. Starting with Number 12 Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Program The Southern Coastal Roadway Improvement Program is an $11.5 billion, three-phase plan to rehabilitate the 165-kilometer section of roadway between May Penn and Port Antonio. The first two phases will involve the building of a new four-lane roadway between May Penn and Yalas, as well as the enlargement and restoration of the existing route between Yalas and Port Antonio. The third phase, beginning in 2024, will involve the building of a new four-lane motorway connecting Port Antonio and Moreland Bay. The project is scheduled to be finished in 2027. When completed, the new roadway will enhance traffic flow, cut travel times, and offer travelers with a safer and more efficient route. It will also stimulate economic activity in the southern parishes of Jamaica. Number 11. North Coast Highway Improvement Project The North Coast Highway Improvement Project is a $5.5 billion project to rehabilitate the 100-kilometer length of road between Ocho Rios and Port Maria. The project includes building a new four-lane roadway between Ocho Rios and Inada Bay, as well as enlarging and repairing the current route between Inada Bay and Port Maria. The project is scheduled to be finished in 2025. When completed, the new roadway will enhance traffic flow, cut travel times, and offer travelers with a safer and more efficient route. It will also stimulate economic activity in Jamaica's North Coast parishes. No matter where in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. No work papers I have to show, cause I am a Jamaican. No matter where in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. No work papers I have to show, cause I am a Jamaican. I have Jamaican walk, them here Jamaican talk, cause I am a Jamaican. Them here Jamaican chat, them say Jamaican bop, cause I am a Jamaican. Now, if you hear in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. Jamaica is starting to build out its infrastructure again, and some of these are being funded by other nations. These conversations with other nations might be at some times controversial. However, these people who are in position of having these conversations at these tables were shown a vote of confidence by Jamaican to go ahead and make those decisions on their behalf. Some of the developments are impacting roads, hospitals, urban centers, cities, wharfs, and other infrastructures. The other point of complaint is that um, people who are coming into the country are coming in to take over. Them here Jamaican chat, them say Jamaican bop, cause I am a Jamaican. Now if Meanwhile, when people are complaining about these things, these are some of the things that are actually happening in the background. There are three important points. One, a lot of foreign nationals who come to Jamaica are actually not successful at all. They come, their expectations are not met, they struggle or they fail and go back to their home country. As a result, locals, as well as the members of the Jamaican diaspora, might get this illusion that anyone who comes to Jamaica from a different country becomes successful, gets this top paid job or runs a profitable business. But that's because these are the only foreigners we see. The reality is, of course, those who don't succeed in Jamaica simply leave before they can make any name for themselves. And hence, we don't know about them. So we can see all the locals, including the ones who succeed and the ones who don't. Whereas with foreign nationals, we only see the successful ones. Hence, the wrong assumption. The true part of this statement about foreigners being successful in Jamaica is that indeed those foreigners who do stay in Jamaica are self-employed or mostly or they take high-level jobs. And here's the data to prove this. The statistics from the latest available reports based on work permits issued to labor immigrants in Jamaica. It shows that 73% of all immigrants are professionals, senior officials, 
and technicians. In other words, they are getting top paid high level jobs. However, the reason for this is these are pretty much the only people who are eligible for a work permit in Jamaica. And this is the third important point, a very interesting one, because in many other countries, the situation with the type of employment is reversed in terms of immigrants doing the least paid jobs and usually require no skills or qualifications. In Jamaica, that's rarely the case. Have you noticed that we don't really see many foreigners working as taxi drivers or housekeepers? This is because the Jamaican government has very strict rules when it comes to protecting its labor market, especially when compared to other countries. And that's why, as a foreign national, you cannot just come to Jamaica and do any job you want. According to the law for your work permit to be approved, the business owner first has to prove that they cannot find a local person for this job position. And that's why the majority of work permits that are issued are indeed for highly qualified and skilled persons, who of course are paid more than an unqualified worker. The legal exceptions to these rules would be foreign entrepreneurs who don't look for any jobs but create jobs in Jamaica and they can bring their relatives or a certain number of other foreigners to work for them. And that's why you can see some clerks or shop assistants or construction workers who are not Jamaicans. They correspond to these other 27% on this chart. Now, I do agree that there are people who are coming into the country um, who, are, who have no Jamaican heritage and there are also people who are coming in who do have Jamaican heritage. And what some of these people are doing when they come into the country is they are setting up businesses. And these businesses are creating employment and adding to the Jamaican economy. Some solutions, maybe we should start to produce more of the things that we use on the island rather than needing to resort to importing it. And also, another thing too is, we, if we set up more businesses that are Jamaican owned and operated, then there is less scope or room and opportunity for people from elsewhere to see business opportunities here and come into Jamaica to then be able to set them up because Jamaicans with Jamaican heritage would have already been doing so. Some of the solutions that people are resorting to is that um, a lot of Jamaicans are seeking visas so that they can go to other countries so that they can live. We are in this world like oh, I am a Jamaican. Um, it is important that they take advice and listen to some of the people who are currently there who are finding it very difficult and recognizing that going to another foreign country does not actually solve the problem because when people migrate and they go to other countries, they go there with their same mindsets and behaviors, which in turn can pose problems. Also, the way of life in other countries is very different to that of the way of life in Jamaica. And a lot of Jamaicans find it difficult to adapt to those way of life. For example, in Jamaica when it rains, so many people can take the option of not going to work. In other countries, whether it rains, snows, hails, or whatever the condition, people need to be in work. One of the, the things that are also um, meeting a lot of Jamaicans when they go abroad and they, their behavior and attitude and mindset that they have in Jamaica and they go there and they want to implement it is that high numbers of them are getting deported and uh, because the countries there are not going to tolerate those behaviors um, and they don't want to bring those challenges and problems into their own countries. East London Immigration Centre. Up to 50 people are spending their final hours in the UK. This after years and in some cases decades in a country they have called home. They'll be leaving on the first deportation charter flight to the Caribbean since the Windrush scandal first broke. Now, what will actually make a difference? How do we really solve the problems at hand? Now, so far, I've suggested some solutions that could work, and a lot of them have to do with building out our belief system, building out um, the way that we work together collaboratively, building out our collective accountability and responsibility building out um, how we seek out for the greater good of everybody in Jamaica, respecting the hard work and earning of other people, and how we hold organizations to account, all of which requires us to be intentional at what we're doing. Cause I am a Jamaican, them here Jamaican chat, them see Jamaican bop, cause I am a Jamaican. Now everywhere in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. Thank you for staying with us here on another episode of Life with the Jam Fums, where we talk about important things uh, relating to Jamaica and its advancement. It was a pleasure having you here with us, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.